The Chronicles of Prydain by Lloyd Alexander. Book Four, Taran Wanderer. Chapter Five, A Judgment. Taran scrambled down the rocks jutting beside the high cascade. In a pool hammered into white spray, he could hardly make out Smite's burly form spinning in the eddies. Heedless of the pounding water, Taran pitched through the falls and sprang into the pool. He groped for Smite's belt and seized it at last. Battling the whirlpool and nearly drowning himself with his own efforts, Taran painfully strove to drag the half-conscious king into the shallows. Smite was bleeding heavily from the forehead, and his ruddy face had gone chalky pale. Taran tugged at the king's waterlogged bulk, hauling him safely from the rolling waters. In another moment, Gurgi and Fluiter were beside him, helping to drag the king ashore. Smite, like a beached whale, collapsed on the bank. Gurgi moaned anxiously, loosening the king's garments, while Taran and the bard hastily saw to Smite's injuries. He can count himself lucky! He's only cracked his skull and half his ribs, said Fluiter. Another man would have been snapped in two, but we're in a fine pickle, he added under his breath to Taran, glancing at the warriors who had come to gather near the unconscious smite. He'll not lay gassed or gory on by the heels now. He needs more healing than we can give. We'd best take him to Kerkadarn. Taran shook his head. He remembered smite's words about the neighboring cantrev lords who had seized the opportunity to attack. It was in his mind, too, that finding Cronillo could best bring Gast and Gorion to terms and thus end their battle. But his thoughts were as tangled as Ordu's weaving, and he fervently wished himself in the place of Smite, whose unconsciousness at the moment seemed a most enviable state. Adan's farmhold is closer, Taran said. We'll bring him there, and Gurgi shall stay with him. You and I must seek out Gast and Gorion and do what we can to stop their quarrel. As for Cornilo and the herd, I doubt we may hope to find them. The companions, tearing their cloaks into strips, set about binding up Smite's wounds. The king's eyelids fluttered and he groaned loudly. Give me to eat, gasped Smite. I may be half drowned, but I'll not be half starved. He put a hand on Taran's shoulder. Good lad, good lad. You have saved my life. Another moment and I'd have been beaten into a pudding. Claim any favor. It is yours. I ask none, Tarn replied, nodding the bandages around Smite's huge chest. Alas, he murmured, what I most want, none can grant. No matter, panted Smite. What you wish of me, you shall have. Sire, you cannot travel far. Tarn began as Smite tried painfully to climb to his feet. Give us leave to ride with your warriors and... Can Master hear? Gurgi called excitedly. Hear with listenings! Lion, too, had caught some sound, for her ears cupped forward and her whiskers twitched. It's my gizzard calling for meat and drink! cried Smite. Loud it must be, for I'm empty as a drum! <coughs> <laughs> no, no, shouted Gurgi, seizing Taran's arm and drawing him past the trees along the riverside. Gurgi hears no thrummings and drummings, but cooings and mooings. Leading on the bard, uh, leaning on the bard, Smite stumbled after them. Gurgi had spoken the truth. The creature's sharp ears had not deceived him. Now Taran himself heard a faint lowing. Gurgi raced toward the sound. Beyond the trees, the land dipped into a shady dell, watered by a streamlet. Taran cried aloud. There stood the herd, grazing calmly around Cornilo. My bulls! bellowed Smite, so loudly that a dozen horned heads turned and stared as alarmed as if some strange new kind of bull had burst into their quiet pasture. Great belly! cried Fluiter. Cornelos led them all to safety. She's wiser than either of her masters. Cornelo raised her head as Taran hurried to her side. She blew out her breath gently and rolled her eyes in a look of long-suffering patience. 
Smite, heedless of his grievous bruises, clapped his hands triumphantly and shouted at the top of his voice for his warriors. Sire, let us drive the herd to Adan's farm, Taran urged. Your own hurts must be tended better than we've done. Drive them where you please, lad, answered Smite. My body and bones, we have them now. That will fetch Gaston Gory unto me at a gallop. He summoned two horsemen, commanding them to bear a message to the Cantrep lords. Tell those two troublemakers where I'll await them, cried Smite. And tell each to call truce, for his cows are found. And Gurgi found them, shouted Gurgi, clapping wildly. Yes, yes, bold, clever, sharp-eared Gurgi finds all that is lost. Oh, yes. He flung his hairy arms around himself and seemed close to bursting with pride and delight at his own deed. Oh, bards will sing of clever Gurgi with rantings and chantings. <laughs> I'm sure they will, old friend, Taran said. You found the herd, but don't forget, we still have Gast and Gorion to deal with, and there's only one Cornilo. The cows were at first reluctant to quit the dell, but after much coaxing, Tarn was able to lead Cornilo along the valley pathways toward Adan's farm. The others followed her, lowing and tossing their horns. It was a strange procession that wended its way across the meadows and rolling hillocks. Smite's warriors rode on either side of the herd, and the red-bearded king himself brandished a spear as if it were a drover's staff. Lion padded after the cattle, alert for strays, and Gurgi perched proud as a shaggy rooster on Cornilo's back. When Adan's hut came in sight, Tarn galloped ahead, calling to the farmer, but he had no sooner dismounted when the door burst open and he fell back, surprised. Adan stood with a rusted sword in his hand. Behind the farmer, Tarn glimpsed Alarka weeping into her apron. Is this how you repay kindness? Adan cried, recognizing Taran immediately. His eyes blade as he pointed the ancient weapon at the approaching warband. Do you come with them to spoil our land? Be gone! It is already done! How then? Taran stammered, shocked at these words from one he held to be a friend. I ride with King Smite and his men. We seek peace between Gast and Gorion. Does it matter whose warriors trampled my crops? Aiden flung back. What Gast has destroyed, Gorion is doubly destroyed, warring back and forth across my field till not a blade of wheat stands. Battle is their pride, but my farm is my life. Do they seek vengeance? I sought only a harvest. In the weariness of despair, Aiden lowered his head and cast his sword to the ground. Taran stared in dismay at the field where Adan had so painfully labored. The hooves of steeds had churned the earth to mud, uprooting the young shoots which now lay torn to shreds. The harvest on which Adan had staked his livelihood would never come, and Taran felt the farmer's heartbreak as if it were his own. Before he could speak, a troop of horsemen galloped from the woods, edging the farm. Taran recognized Lord Gorion at their head, and another moment Lord Gast and his riders appeared. Catching sight of his rival, the Cantrev lord spurred his mount and galloped frantically to the cottage, flung himself out of the saddle, and with a furious shout raced toward Gorion. Robber! cried Gast. Do you mean to steal Cornelo from me again? Thief! cried Gorion. I took what was mine to begin with. Liar! roared Gast. Never was she yours. Insults! Insolence! roared Gorion, his face turning purple, his hand snatching for his sword. Be silent! bellowed Smite. He shook his battle axe at the Cantrev lords. Your king speaks! How dare you quarrel and insult each other, you pig-headed brawlers! Smite gestured to his warriors, who strode to seize Gast and Gorion. The riders of the two warbands cried out angrily and made to unsheathe their swords. For an instant, Taran feared another battle would rage then and there, but Smite's warriors stood their ground, and the sight of the enraged king himself caused the horsemen to draw back submissively. My dungeon will teach you to be good neighbors, cried Smite. You'll stay there till you learn. As for Cornelo, I've split my skull, cracked my bones, and ridden to the edge of starvation this day, and so I claim her for myself. 
a prize of war. And small recompense it is for the vexation you've given me. Another day and you'd have set the whole cantrip ablaze. At this, Gast and Gorion both roared in furious protest, and Tarn could no longer hold his tongue. He strode to the king's side. Uh, sire, uh, even a lifetime in your dungeon will not raise one grain of wheat in a ruined field. Adan has lost all he hoped to gain, one harvest to keep himself and his wife alive. You offered me a favor, Tarn went on. I refused it then. Will you let me claim it now? Ask what you please, my lad, replied Smite. It is already given. Tarin hesitated a moment as he stepped forward and stood facing the cantor of lords. Then he turned to Smite. I ask you this, he said. Set Gast and Gorion free. While Smite blinked in astonishment, Gorion glimpsed Tarin for the first time, exclaimed, It's the big keeper who cozened me out of my horse. I took him for a lout, but he asks a noble favor. Grant it, Smite. He speaks wisdom. Set them free, Tarn continued, to labor beside Adan and strive to mend what they have destroyed. What? cried Gast. I took him for a hero, but he's no more than a lout. How dare he ask Gast the generous to dwell, delve in the ground like a mole and for no reward. Impudence, impertinence, insolence shouted Gorion. I'll not have a big keeper pass judgment on Gorion the Valorous, nor on Gast the Generous, exclaimed Gast. Pass judgment on yourselves then, Tarn answered, picking up two handfuls of earth and torn shoots and holding them before the furious Cantrev lords. This is what remains of Adan's livelihood, as well take a sword and slay him. Look at this, Lord Gorion, for there is more truth here than in your tales of giants and monsters. And this he treasured, Lord Gast, more than you treasure any of your possessions. And it was more truly his own, for he toiled to make it so. Gast and Gorion had fallen silent. The two rough Cantrev lords stared at the ground like sheepish boys. Adan and his wife looked on without speaking. That lad has a better head on his shoulders than I do exclaimed Smite. And his judgment is wiser. Kinder, too, for my choice would have been the dungeon, not the delving. The Cantrev lords reluctantly nodded agreement. Tarin turned to Smite. The rest of my favor is this. Grant most where need is greatest. Do you claim Cornelo for your own? Sire, give her to Adan. Give up Cornelo? Smite began, sputtering and choking. My prize of war! Uh, uh, yeah. He finally nodded his head. So be it, lad. Adan shall keep her, Tarn went on, and Gaston Gorion shall have her next calves. What have my herd? cried Gorion. And mine, cried Gast. They're so mixed together, no man can tell his own from another's. Lord Gorion shall divide the herds in equal portions, Tarin said. He shall not, Lord Gast broke in. He'll give me all the scrawny ones and keep the fat ones for himself. It's I who'll divide them. Not so, shouted Gorion. You'll fob off none of your raw-boned creatures on me. Lord Gorion shall divide the herds, Tarin repeated. But Lord Gast shall be first to choose his half. Ha, ha, ha. Well said, Smite burst out, roaring with laughter. My breath and blood, you have them there. Gorion divides and Gas chooses. Oh, 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 it takes two thieves to strike an honest bargain. Aidan and Alarka had come to stand before Tarn and King Smite. Who you may truly be, I do not know, the farmer said to Tarn. But you befriended me far better than I befriended you. Oh, wisdom of kindly master, cried Gurgi, as the Cantrev lords set about dividing their herds and Smite's warriors made ready to return to Ker Kadarn. Gurgi finds cows, but only wise master knows what to do with them. If indeed I did rightly, Tarn replied. Gast and Gorion will be waiting for Cornelo's calves. Gast said they are always twins. 
I only hope, he added with a grin, she doesn't disappoint us. It was long after nightfall when the companions at last reached Kerkadarn. Fluider and Gurgi were too exhausted to do more than fling themselves onto their couches. Tarn would gladly have followed them, but Smite took his arm and drew him to the great hall. Count your day well spent, my lad, cried Smite. You've spared the cantrip from a war and me from being dropped into jelly. As for Gast and Gorion, how long they'll stay at peace with each other, I'll not guess. But you've taught me one thing. My dungeons are useless. My body and bones, I'll have them walled up directly. From this day, I'll try my hand at speaking instead of smiting. And yet, lad, Smite went on, furrowing his brow. My wits are slow. I need no man to tell me that, and I am easier in my mind when I have a blade in my hand. Will you return favor for favor? Stay with me in Cantriv Cataphur. Sire, Tarn answered, I seek to learn who my kinsmen are. I cannot. Kinsmen, shouted Smite, slapping his great girth. There's enough of me to make all the kinsmen you could want. Hear me well, he added, his voice quieter now. A widower I am, and childless. Do you yearn for parents? No less do I yearn for a son. When the horn of Gwyn the Hunter sounds for me, there shall be none to take my place, and none would I choose but you. Stay, lad, and you shall one day be king of Cadifer. King of Cadifer? Tarin cried. His heart leaped. What need to seek the mere when he could offer Ilanwe a royal throne? the proudest gift he could ever lay at her feet. Tarin, king of Cadifer. The words rang more sweetly in his ears than Tarin, assistant pig keeper. Yet suddenly his joy turned cold. While Ilanwe might honor his rank, would she respect him for abandoning his quest even before it had begun? Could he respect himself? For a long while, Tarin did not answer. Then, with fond admiration, he turned his eyes to smite. The honor you would give me, Tarn began, there is nothing I would value more highly. Yes, I long to accept it, his voice faltered. <sighs> Yet I would rather hold kinship by right of noble birth, not as a gift. It may be, he went on slowly, that in truth I am nobly born. If it should prove thus, then gladly would I rule Cadifer. How then, cried Smite. My body and bones, I'd rather see a wise pig keeper on my throne than a blood prince who's a fool. But, but, but there's this as well, Taran answered. It is in my heart to learn the truth about myself. I will not stop short of it. Were I to do so, who I truly am would forever be unknown. And through all my life, I would feel a part of me lacking. At these words, Smite's battle-scarred face fell with sadness, and regretfully he bowed his head. But after a moment, he clapped Tarrant heartily on the back. My breath, blood, and beard, he cried. You've a will to chase the wild goose, will-o'-the-wisp, looking glass, or whatever it may be, and I'll say more, no more to keep you from it. Seek it out, lad. Whether or not you find it, come back, and Catifer will welcome you. But hasten, for if Gast and Gorion are ever at loggerheads again, I'll not vouch for how much of the cane trap will be left. Thus Tarin, with Gurgi and Fluiter, set off once more. In his secret heart, Tarin cherished the hope he might return to Smite's realm with proud tidings of his parentage. Yet he did not foresee how long it would be until he set foot in Cantra of Cadifer again. <laughs>